What is going on guys? Welcome back to Boxer Baddies. We are here day four with Stella. Let's go. So we got the wastegate out because we had to change the springs. It's time for her to get a little taste of that E85. Alright guys, so got the boost controller back in, it's on the wastegate, and the wastegate's back in, we have about 15 pounds, I think it's 14.5 actually, based off of the tile um, uh, model that we have, so now we're going to put her back down on the ground, throw her on the dyno, and see what she does. Yeah, so basically what was happening is our spark plugs are gapped a little bit too close because now that we're turning up the boost, um, it's starting to get a little choppy up top. So Drew is going to, we're going to throw out a new set of plugs that are spaced a little bit more and it should be a lot happier and we'll go from there, but it should be okay. Based off of the computer, the car is doing exactly what we're telling it to do. The problem is, the mechanical side, the dyno, is showing something different. So the car is responding differently. It's responding, doing, telling it, after we're telling it what to do, the car's not doing that. But on computer, on paper, it is. So how do you fix that? Well, we're thinking it might be the TGVs being funky on us. So what we're going to do is we're going to reset these TGVs, hopefully, by unplugging them um, unplugging the, because um, what we're doing is we're trying to eliminate variables. So we're unplugging the piggybacks, which uh, power the fuel pressure sensor and the E85 kit, and we're going to replug in the original plugs into the TGV so that the computer can be like, oh hey, they're still here, and maybe reset them, because maybe something happened where the car got turned on or something um, when it wasn't supposed to, when the original TGVs weren't plugged in yet or something, you know, just something funky. So we gotta plug them back in and let's see if the car will recognize itself and say, oh, 
blah, 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 because these are supposed to work with TGVs. That's why they have piggybacks. Otherwise, they'd be like, you, you know, they wouldn't give you piggybacks, and they'd say, you know, it's not going to work. They wouldn't give you a piggyback if it wasn't going to work. So for those of you guys that didn't know, this is a TGV. This is just one that they had lying around, but pretty much it's like a... It's like a restriction in the throttle. It's supposed to help avoid mid-range mid torque. Yeah, and now it's just kind of getting in our way because it's not recognizing them entirely. Um, so we're trying to figure out. This is not the one off this car. It's, it's a, about a half a day's work to get to them. So we're just trying to figure out how we can avoid actually ripping the motor apart to get to the TGV. Okay, so this is the best chart of day two on a dyno, but this is the problem that we're experiencing, right? So this bottom line is the 26 pounds, as you can see right here, and the lower one is 19. So you can see how it goes up and then it just starts dropping down when it should stay level, like the 19 boost one. So that curve right here is the restriction from the TGVs. So we got to figure that out somehow. I'm a pro tuner for Ethan. I've had the privilege of rolling a Stella Honda Dyno the last couple days. It's been an honor. Um, the reason why we're having this video is I wanted to talk to you about the TGV setup that we got going on here. Um, so in Ethan's build we installed a flex fuel content sensor and a fuel pressure differential sensor from Cobb and uh, that poses some obstacles to overcome in the build so a long-term concern of mine is the fact that when you install both of these devices on the car you actually lose fault code connection with your TGVs and so basically how the system works which you can see this is a TGV we have out of one bank right here and you can uh, see the little flaps in there and those are uh, stay closed when the car is spooling to develop torque. They open up uh, higher RPM to allow higher volume of air, and that gives you a nice blend of torque and horsepower. They're controlled by this device on the back side, which has a servo motor and a position sensor built into it. You can see inside there, there's uh, about five pins that, uh, that the computer uses to maintain this uh, device. And so Cobb is really smart, and what they did was they developed a kit that plugs into the TGV motor right here, and it retasks the wires that are uh, the, uh, the signal wires that are used to bounce back and forth between the TGVs and the uh, computer to relay the flex fuel content and the fuel pressure. So uh, there was a compromise when they did this and what Cobb decided to do was they just kind of run the TGVs in the dark because uh, they no longer report their actual position. So the computer just puts it in a known place and hopes it does what it's supposed to do. Um, but if you ever have a problem with your TGVs, the computer doesn't know that there's a problem and it can't report it. So basically what can happen is, if you don't know there's a problem and you're running your car, it could lead to an engine problem because the, the, stuck, uh, the flaps could get stuck shut and uh, you know, result in an imbalance between cylinders. So um, I always recommend that we go with the TGV deletes anytime that we run flex fuel and uh, alcohol content um, so that we don't have to ever worry about having a problem in the future. All right, guys, so just like Drew explained, you can see the TGVs here, and one thing that I wanted to show you guys is the actuation of these flaps, because if you haven't really seen them before, you might not know exactly how they move. So this motor right here, which is connected to the five pin connection that he was talking about, is actually what operates this motor. And when the TGVs open, you can see they open just like that, and they allow maximum airflow. But if, they stuck, if they're stuck shut, you can have an issue um, if we're getting those fault codes that he was talking about. So, as he said, the best thing in this case is to just delete these mechanisms just in case the computer is not lining up with what they are actually doing. So, that is the thought process behind that. Okay, I just wanted to add one more thing onto this real quick. I'm sure that you guys saw Ethan moving the flaps. So, you can see when the flaps are fully open, there's still a space that the flap and the bar that holds the flap occupies. And when you go to a TGV delete, you remove this entire bar out of the system, which means that you get a little bit of extra airflow because you no longer have anything that's obstructing the path of the air in your engine. Okay, so I wanted to uh, show you the difference between a TGV delete and the TGVs because just by, just by visualization, you can see that there's an enormous difference in flow characteristics between these two guys and, and it'll even illustrate it on the bottom like this right here. So that's a lot of airflow blocked. Yeah, it is. This is one of our favorite upgrades for the Subaru, just like what I was talking about earlier. It eliminates problems in the future, and uh, you know, thanks to Import Image, they keep a lot of the parts that we use in stock all the time. So 
if we ever need these, we just give them a call and they, they come right over with it. It's great. Awesome. Yeah, huge shout out to Import Image. They are always coming in handy for when we need parts. As you guys know, we've gotten so many parts from Import Image Racing, including the turbo and everything that we got last week. So huge shout out to Import Image. Thank you guys so much. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to do the TGVs in a little bit. Uh, it should be roughly like a three-hour job. So the guys are just taking care of all their phone calls, anything that they got to do in the office um, so we can have the rest of the day cleared up to do that. And uh, in the meantime, your boy's going to hop on their simulator. Love this thing. So they're still talking to Ethan. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the holdup is because uh, I was on the simulator having a blast. But I figured I'd show you guys uh, what the update is and how we're doing. So this is the dyno chart from yesterday. The best pull we got uh, was 257 horses with 372, if it'll focus, 372 torque. And it's a really good flat curve. So. Still is liking it so far, and the TGV delete is going to give it even more airflow for more power and, of course, more fun. Forged internals, let's go! What? What? Bro, Stella's going to be forged internals. Like, literally. No, 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 no. Literally, right now, so Zach and Drew sat me down and they surprised Stella with forged internals! Yo! Dude, oh what my gosh, dude? guys, like, oh my god, Stella's gonna be forced, now we can push power, that, oh my god, oh my god, guys, sorry, I, bro, where did that come from, Jesus, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so, I don't know what to say right now, guys. What did you guys do to make Ethan act like a five-year-old girl? <laughs> what the hell? Uh, well, you know, we kind of dropped the bomb on him. I mean, yeah, that was your trick, I'd say so. God damn. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Zach and I have been contemplating this for a little bit, you know, regarding Ethan, and um, we kind of just made an executive decision last night. We called Import. They had these parts in stock. They delivered them after hours, like, fucking awesome. And uh, we went ahead and... Took care of it. Yeah. And we just wanted to surprise Ethan today, so we just brought him in here, like, in the principal's office to play the smack down, and then, uh, you know, that's what happens. So. Oh, mission accomplished. <laughs> mission yeah. accomplished. <laughs> One to ten. How excited Dude. are you? A thousand! Let's go! Skit! Can I get a skit? Skit! 